All right, so welcome back. We're going to start looking at solving systems of equations by elimination. But this time, I want you guys to be able to solve equations by elimination through multiplication. So we're not just going to multiply, multiply through by a negative 1 anymore. Uh, our goal is to actually multiply one or both of these equations by any number so that when we do add them, that they eliminate. Uh, again, we could back up and uh, graph both of these equations but, and then find where they intersect to get the solution. The only issue with that would mean that I had to solve for y in both equations, get the slope, get the y-intercepts, graph them, hope that it fits on my graph, and then also hope that those intersection points are nice and clean. Uh, however, that's not always going to be the case, so we want to give you guys another route around the mountain to the same kind of solution, uh, to the same target, which is a different method of getting there. Okay, so, let me show you how this works. Uh, just like we have been, we're still going to uh, line up the equal signs, uh, but we're also going to have to line up our variables. And so I, I can do that pretty easy with my, my board here. As you can see, I'm going to line up my equal signs, right? But I'm also going to make sure that my x's are lined up, like I have here. My y's are lined up, my equal signs are lined up, and these constants are lined up. It doesn't really matter what order these are lined up in, but we like standard form where it's ax plus by equals c every single time just to keep it consistent. Uh, now I start looking at these two equations though, and I try to say, hey, can I add these together? Can I add up these equations? Because if I add these equations, they still stay balanced because they're both already balanced. Uh, but when I add these, negative 2x plus x is a negative x, and 3y plus 2y is 5y. So I didn't eliminate anything. If the whole goal is to eliminate, I didn't do it. So I start thinking, okay, what would I have to do to one or both of these equations so that when I do add them up, that they would eliminate? So I just start thinking outside the box here. Well, let me think. If this was a 2 right here in front of the x, would my x's eliminate? Negative 2x plus 2x would be 0, right? So that would eliminate, but I can't just put a 2 there. That's not fair, and that's not equal to all the terms or both sides of the equation. So how can I get this to be a 2x, right? Remember, for this to be 2x, it'd have to be 2 times, right? So how can I get a 2 there? Well, I'd have to multiply the 2, uh, the x by 2. But I can't just multiply the x by 2. I have to multiply everything by 2. So let's see what that looks like here. Let me erase this, get it out of our way. Let's multiply this bottom equation by 2 and see what happens. I'm going to rewrite my system because I am changing it. I'm going to rewrite it over here. I'm not doing anything to the top equation, so I'm just going to rewrite that really quick for reference. All right, now we're going to multiply everything, and I mean everything. 2 times x, which is 2x. So that's this right here. I'm going to do 2 times the 2y, which is a positive 4y. Um, and that's this part right here. And I'm also going to multiply by this 5. This 2 by the 5 over here as well. 2 times 5 is 10. So I've multiplied everything by 2, and now I have a new system to work with. Doesn't that change the problem, Mr. Nelson? It doesn't change the problem. It's a good question because, remember, that this is an, about this is a, what, how did you say it? <laughs> this is a balanced. balanced equation right here already, and, and because I multiplied both sides by two, I'm keeping it balanced. It's like if I said one equals one, I multiply side, both sides by two. Well, that be two equals two. It's it's still a balanced equation. So this is not a, it looks different, but it's actually the same equation. So we can do this, and it's still fair to both sides of that equation. What's great about this? is now I have two equations that I can add and actually eliminate a variable. So I got negative 2x plus 2x. We talked about that just a second ago. That cancels out to 0. 3y plus 4y is 7y. And 4 plus 10 is 14. Now I can keep on solving this one because I only have one variable left. So I can actually solve this for y by dividing both sides by 7. So y equals 14 divided by 7, which is 2. Now, I'm not done, am I? No. I have a system of equations. I have two variables, x and y. So really what I'm looking for is an x comma y solution, an ordered pair. And I only have the y right now. That's 2. Now I need to do what I have been doing this whole time is actually pick an equation to substitute back into. I always go back to one of my original two, and I try to think, well, which, which one's going to be easier to solve for x because I already know y. Um, I look at the second equation. I see x is already alone. And that means I'm going to be, it's going to be a little bit easier. I'll have a coefficient to get rid of, to get rid of that. So I'm going to use the x plus 2y equals 5 equation. But this time I'm going to substitute in y. 
uh, for 2 there. So x plus 2. I'm going to use parentheses to substitute out the y, and then I'm going to replace that y with 2. Now I can solve for x. I got x plus 2 times 2. Let's see, 2 times 2 is 4. And then I can subtract this 4 because it's a constant from both sides to get this x alone. All right, so four, time, 4 minus 4 is 0, and I'm left with x equals 5 minus 4, which is 1. And I'm almost done. I got x equals 1. That's not my solution. I just found the x part of the coordinate, so my solution is actually 1, comma, 2. And that's how we do uh, systems of equations and solving for a solution using elimination by multiplication. From mouthful. Yeah, that's a lot, of, lot to say. Why don't you guys go ahead and pause the video and just try this one up right, right, there, right now. Right now! Okay, hopefully you did that. Mr. Craig doesn't believe you did it though. Liars! You better try it. All right, so first things first, you should have lined up your equal signs. I did my best to kind of actually do that for you already. Equal signs are lined up. Again, let me draw my arrow so you can see what I'm talking about. My x's are lined up, my x terms, my y terms, my equal signs, and my constants. And what's great is that they're both in standard form of ax plus by equals c, and that's good. All right, now you'll notice if we try to add right away, uh, 2x uh, minus an x or 2x plus a negative x there would just leave me with an x, so that didn't eliminate. That's supposed to be plus, sorry, you're right. Uh, y plus 3y here, that's going to be 4y, so you'll notice nothing eliminated. I'm not going to continue on going on here because nothing eliminated, and that's exactly what I'm trying to do. So now I've got to start manipulating these equations so that they actually eliminate. Uh, well. What do you want to do here? There's, again, many ways around this mountain. Um, I don't know which one you might go, go with. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to try to get rid of my, let's go with getting, getting rid of the y's first. Uh, that looks pretty easy. Uh, if this were a negative 3 right here, negative 3 plus a positive 3 would eliminate to 0. But how do I get that to be a negative 3? I would have to multiply this whole equation by a negative 3. So let's try that. Let's multiply by a negative 3, and let's rewrite this system so that I don't get lost in all that math. All right, multiply through both sides. Uh, so I'm just going to, it kind of looks like distribution. Just know that I'm distributing to every term in my equation. Negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. Negative 3 times y is a negative 3y. Negative 3 times 3 is a negative 9. Don't forget that equal sign. All right, and then let's bring the other equation over, which I didn't do anything to, so it's just a negative x plus 3y equals negative 12. Now let's try adding again. See what happens. Yeah, I got my add in there that time. Negative 6x plus a negative x is negative 7x. Uh, negative 3y plus 3y, that's going to cancel out because they're opposite coefficients there. That's good to see. And then negative 9 plus a negative 12 is what? Negative 21. Negative 21, right? So cool. We did eliminate, and that's exactly what we were trying to do. And now we can solve for x because it's the only variable left. That's pretty easy. That's just the coefficient there. To get x alone, we need to get rid of that. So we are going to divide both sides by a negative 7. Negative 7 divided by negative 7 is 1, so I'm left with 1x. A negative divided by a negative is positive, and 21 divided by 7 is 3. So positive 3. So I'm done, right? No. Huh. You wish, right? You wish. That only tells me half of the ordered pair. It is the x part of my coordinates. So that goes right here. I still need to solve for y. And so I need to choose an equation uh, that makes it pretty easy to solve for y. I'm going to go with the first equation because the y doesn't have a coefficient on it. Sometimes it does. It just so happens it doesn't here. You could use either of these equations to solve for y, though, as long as you replace x with 3. So 2x plus y equals 3. Just getting that from right here. And I'm going to replace the x with 3. So 2, let's take the x out first. And now let's plug in that 3. Substitution's done. And solve. 2 times 3 is 6, plus y equals 3. And now we have to get this alone. Don't have to worry about a coefficient, but I do have to get rid of this constant. So I'm going to subtract that 6 off of both sides. So the constant's gone on that side. This is with y equals 3 minus 6, which is negative 3. So. Not done yet. One more step. Put it into my ordered pair, and now I have my solution of 3, comma, negative 3. You're done. I'm done. You're done. No, you're not. Go do the problems. Get down there somewhere.